I've got something really cool from my Japan trip haul today. We're going to be looking at the Holbein Shin Gensei watercolor half pan. So keep watching. <laughs> pans up open stock from Sakaido in Tokyo and they are Shin Gensai watercolor. Now since they were open stock they didn't come with a palette so I ordered a Meiden palette from Amazon because I am cheap and Meiden palettes are fairly inexpensive. Just move these down. Now before I'm ready to start my review I have a little bit of assembly to do, but first I want to tell you guys which colors I picked up. Before I do that though, for those of you who like me did not know what Shingensai meant before this moment, the Holbein website at holbein-works.co.jp says that Shingensai is a solid watercolor that is made from Japanese traditional colors by a drawing process. It is suitable for painting on a square piece of thick paper oblong oblong card and a haiku picture. Uh, the characteristics include fine coloring, fine Japanese traditional 28 colors made from carefully selected pigments and dissolve in water easily. Color is dissolving as soon as you touch it with a brush soaked with water. So there is no need to uh, sort of activate these. And this is available in two kinds of sets if you, can, if you buy them in set, 14 colors or 28 colors. And there are 28 colors total. Holbein has another set of half pan watercolors on the market as well as tube watercolors and the Iridori line. I have used the tube watercolors. You guys can check out that video by clicking this card here. I have also used the Iridori line. I really like the Iridori line. There are more opaque colors in that and Iridori is in reference to the traditional color line or antique color line. I have not however used the other Holbein half pans or the Shin Gansai half pans. So it's hard to tell from photos, but I believe I got turquoise blue, violet, yellow, hooker's green, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, deep green, and this is kind of a guess because it could be viridian, sepia, and this is kind of a guess because it could be burnt umber, black, vermilion hue, hmm. I said green, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, uh. I think I have too many greens on my list and too few other colors. This is the green. This could have been hooker's green or deep green. It's probably deep green. So I'm missing somebody. Vermilion hue, uh, carmine. So I'm sure you guys with your eagle astute eyes know which one I missed and will let me know in the comments below. You can buy these in the US at JetPins. Unfortunately, they're kind of the only place you can buy them. Otherwise, I would recommend anybody else. Um, so you can go to JetPins.com to get them and they're going for $3.60. These were sold in the Gansai Tombi section, um, not in the Western style watercolors. So I can only assume that these are a little bit more opaque and are maybe handled a little bit more like Gansai Tombi or other types of Edagame uh, watercolor and not like Western watercolors where we do lots of thin glazes and washes. So I have my colors here. They are slightly, let me grab a cheap half pan. They are slightly bigger than your average half pan. So I bought a larger watercolor tin. And I'm just going to slot them in for now because I may end up switching their order. And I will put links to everything in the description down below. It was going so easy, y'all, and then it didn't want to go at all. And with most watercolors, the bottom will say what it is. These do have a number and probably the name in kanji. But I, alas, can't read it. And look, y'all, I even have room to grow for the next time I go to Japan. Kind of thinking maybe I should switch that all the way over there. Like how with these half pans, they kind of snap into place and are held tight. 
I usually have to use some washi tape or some double stick tape and then bend things all out of order. All right, and they will slide, but that's okay because that's gonna, it's like an abacus. Uh, it's gonna make it easy for me to rearrange things as I swatch and figure things out. So as you guys have probably surmised from the title of this video, this is indeed an unbox and swatch. And there really wasn't much unboxing, but I promise there will be swatching. So we don't need to pre-activate these. We just need to dip it in and pick up some color. And there's a few smutches of red in there, but I think that's from travel. So that was sort of a first pass with the red. Let's see if I can kind of get it a little darker. Ooh, that is a red violet. That's pretty. Oh, I don't think I guessed what blue this was. We'll find out in a minute. Okay, so it's kind of like an ultramarine. The photos on Jepkins are pretty terrible for guessing color. I, the best I can come up with though is Compose Blue. Looks like I'll have to take this unboxing swatch to another sheet of watercolor paper. Ooh, that's a very nice burnt sienna. Leave this here for you guys to look at and admire. And grab. my next pad. So I was expecting these colors to be a lot more opaque. And your typically opaque colors like yellow ochre and burnt sienna are, you know, opaque. They're, they aren't any more opaque than any other um, sort of Western watercolor. So I'm gonna leave my lines to dry. So I wanna go ahead and give that vermilion hue another swipe. It's a little bit better. Let's see, what magical mystery green. That's probably the deep green. I use hooker's green literally every time I have to paint grass in seven inch carrots. So I know what a, and that does look like a sepia or almost like a Van Dyke brown. And then our final, are you an indigo or are you a black? You're an indigo, that's fine. I could mix a black from these three pretty easily. So I picked these up, open stock, open stock, open stock at Sakaido in Tokyo. Um, I'm gonna do a little bit digging and see if there's anywhere else stateside that you guys would be able to get these. And I will uh, check in with you guys once these are dry. So you can get the whole 28 color set, which also includes metallics on Amazon for just shy of $100, $97.50. So I can't really imagine this video inspiring someone to spend a hundred bucks on something they've never tried. But if you're interested, I'll pop a link for you guys in the description below. I'm gonna noodle around, whoa. Man, once you let like the water just sit on top for a while, I know I said you don't need to activate these, but boy, when you do. And this is on cellulose watercolor paper. So this is fluid watercolor paper. So it's not expensive watercolor paper. It does have a little bit of a texture though. But like once you've allowed the color to like kind of wake up a little bit with some water, it's really vibrant. It comes on really strong. Except for that blue, that blue's kinda, kinda sad. I imagine there's a bit of opacity to these as I'm handling them, and I'll show you that in a minute. Like turquoise and compost blue, um, they both handle a little bit more like gouache. So they're, they're very vibrant as I'm laying them down, but then they dry just a wee bit chalky. I wonder if these are intended for use on edigami paper. So good thing I bought loads of it then when I was in Japan, because I really enjoy doing edigami postcards. If that is the case, then I should handle these less like Western watercolors, 
where I do lots of thin, thin layers and more like Japanese watercolors where I would do one, maybe two layers, um, but work really thickly with the color. But I like the colors in general. They're very bright and vibrant, fun colors. So I think what I'm going to do to help you guys decide if the Holbein Shin Gensai watercolors are right for you is I'm gonna do two field tests like I did with the Mozart Como Rebi watercolors. I'm going to do an Edigami field test and then I'm going to do a Western style watercolor field test. And that way you guys will be able to see if these watercolors will suit your needs. So I hope you found this unboxing swatch helpful, useful and informative. And I hope you guys will consider subscribing so that you can catch the other two field tests that are coming your way. I have loads more Japanese art supplies to share with you guys from my trip to Japan in March 2018. So I hope you guys, if you guys are interested in stationery, if you're interested in art supplies, I hope you guys will stick around for those as well. It is always a pleasure to get to play with art supplies for you guys. And if it weren't for the genera generosity, almost a generation, the generosity of my dear art nerds over on Patreon, this would not be possible. So I really want to thank them for their support and their encouragement over the years. If you would like to help me do what I do, you can head on over there at patreon.com slash natosoup and find out more information on how your $1, $2 a month can really go a long way to helping make, help make content like this possible. So I'll see you guys with the field test. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. These were the Holbein Shingansai watercolors. Bye!